Hello 8th graders, if you're watching this video, you are watching for Impulse Notes. Um, the notes that I'm about to do on the screen, I need you to make sure that your paper is looking identical to mine. You're going to need these notes in order to complete the practice uh, questions here in just a little bit. So here we go. The first thing that we're going to start with is actually something that you already know pretty well, and that's the uh, momentum. So we're going to start off with the equation for momentum before we get into what impulse is, and that's something we know and love well already. Momentum is mass times velocity. And this is something that we have practiced a whole bunch. And if you noticed, the reason why we're starting with momentum is the, the ELR that we're dealing with is to identify and calculate impulse. And then your job is to relate it to momentum. So momentum and impulse are actually really closely related. And that's why we start with it, um, start with momentum. So number two, what is impulse? Impulse is how we talk about a change in momentum. And what it requires in order to change momentum is a force. This is what we talked about when we did inertia. So in order to make something um, have a lot more inertia or change its inertia, one of the things that you can do is to change the amount of push or pull that you're putting on the object. So the next part of this we have to talk about is what Newton said. And we are going to go to Newton's second law. This is something we haven't talked a lot about in class yet, and it's one we're going to go into much greater depth in the next unit. But Newton's second law, he told us what force is. He said that force is equal to an object's mass times the amount of acceleration. So if you have an object that is really, really heavy, and is speeding up really, really fast, you have a ton of force. And that's what Newton said it was. So we need to use his equation in order to, to connect our impulse and momentum ideas. So here's what we're going to do. Since Newton said that force equals mass times acceleration, what we're going to do is we're going to actually rearrange this equation in order to solve for acceleration. The way we're going to do that is by dividing both sides by mass and what you get is force divided by mass equals acceleration. So all I did was rearrange what Newton's equation was all about. And what we've solved for is acceleration. Before we could take that and go further with it, I want to take just a second to pause and talk about what acceleration is. So I've got this diagram here, and I hope this, this helps me to think about it. I hope it does the same for you also. And here's how it works. So suppose you have a car that's just sitting there got a velocity of zero and you start a stopwatch right when the car is about to start driving off and so your time starts at zero well by the time you hit stop on your stopwatch it's been 10 seconds later and when you do hit stop that car is going 50 meters per second well if I were to ask you why did that car stop start at a stopped position and then finish at a moving position you would say well it sped up it went from zero to 50 and it was accelerating. Well, mathematically, the way that we would talk about that is we would say that the acceleration is the change in the velocity. So in physics, we talk about the change in velocity with a triangle. And that's the Greek letter delta. So that's change in velocity divided by time. And we have those that information. So if I rewrite that, with numbers, the change in velocity, they went from 0 to 50, so that's 50 meters per second. And the amount of time, it took 10 seconds. So 50 divided by 10, which you get is 5. And then the units for this aren't super important now. Like I said, we're going to get into this later, but 5 meters per second squared. Another way to think about that is this car increased its speed by 5 meters per second every single second. So in the first second, he increased his speed up five miles per hour, or miles per, meters per second, rather. And then in the next one, he went five more meters per second, so he's up to 10, all the way up for 10 whole seconds until he made it to his top speed, or velocity, of 50 meters per second. The part, the reason why I'm showing you this is because we want this part right here. And here's why. Actually, I'm gonna finish out these notes. So it says acceleration, is the change in velocity divided by the time 
that it took for that change to happen. So now, here's why we need that information. Let's scoot the page up just a little bit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite or put down uh, Newton's rewritten equation. What it was is he said that acceleration is the same as force divided by mass. So I'm going to write down force divided by mass. And he said that that equals acceleration. Well, we just solved for acceleration in this last part right here. Acceleration is the same as change in velocity over time. So I'm going to write that instead of A for acceleration. I'm going to say change in velocity divided by time. The reason why I've done this is because we're going to use it, and I'm going to show you how the equation that you already know for momentum is buried inside of this. We just have to pull it out. And here's how. In math, you can do this thing called cross-multiplying. And the way that you do that is you would multiply those two and set them equal to the multiplication of those two. And here's what it would look like. This is called cross-multiplying. What you're going to get is f times t, and that's going to be equal to the other two, m times delta v. Now here's why we did that. Check it out. m times the change in velocity is what we already know. That's momentum. The mass times the velocity. When we did the f times the t, that is impulse. So we're going to unpack this just a little bit, because if you're like me, that's a lot of math, and that's a lot to think about. And so I need to put this into words. What I've done for you here in the paper is I have rewritten this equation, nice, big, and bold, and in, in clean print. We're going to use that a whole bunch. But it helps me a lot to think about this in terms of words also. So here's what I want you to do. I'm going to rewrite this in words. I want you to do the same, and we're going to do some highlighting. So basically what this equation is saying is how hard and for how long was a force pushing or pulling. In this case, we're just going to think about pushing. And so here's what I'm going to highlight. The part about like the how hard was it pushing, I'm going to underline that in blue. That's this part right here. That's the force. And then for how long was it pushing? That's the time factor. So how hard and for how long was the force pushing? Well, that's what momentum is, is how hard and how long did you have to push something to get it to go. So let's do a, a practice. On the back side of your paper, please flip your papers over. On the back side of your paper, it looks like this. You've got example one. It says, during a car crash, a 1,000 kilogram car hit a cement wall at 14 meters per second, and it came to a stop in a very short time, 0 0.08 seconds. So the question is asking us, how much force did the wall have to put on the car? This is the real question that you want to answer when you want to find out about if people survived an accident or not, because it's the amount of force that's going to kill somebody. So the first thing that we're going to do is we need to keep track of the stuff that's important to us. And we're going to start with, we're going to start with the mass right here. So 1,000 kilograms, that's important information. It said it hit the cement wall at 14 meters per second, that's also important information. It came to a stop, you need to know that, and it also happened in 0 0.08 seconds. And then finally, it's asking us to figure out what was the force. That's what we're hopefully going to eventually end our, our question with. So let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to write down all of our givens. We know that the mass of the car was 1,000 kilograms. We know that the change in velocity it started out with 14 meters per second and it ended with 0 meters per second. So 14 minus 0. Our change in velocity is 14 meters per second. We also know our time. Time took 0 0.08 seconds. 
for our unknown, what we have to finally come up with, our calculation, we want to find out the force. The equation from the front side of the page is force times time, that's simple, equals momentum, mass times change in velocity. Now we're going to substitute. We don't know force yet, so I'm going to leave it as an F. Our time was 0 0.08 equals our mass, 1,000 kilograms. Oops, I'm leaving it off for now. Times our change in velocity, which was 14. When we solve this, what you're going to do is you're going to have to divide by 0.08 on either, on either side. And what you end up with is force by itself on the left equals 1,000 times 14 divided by 0 0.08, which ends up being 175,000 newtons. And that's our final answer. So in other words, when this car crashed into the wall and it came to a stop, the wall put 175,000 newtons worth of force onto the car in that much time. That's a ton of force. So here's the next question. What if the exact same car hit a mountain of pillows instead of a cement wall? What would be the difference about that collision? Well, we're going to start this the same way with a given. The mass of the car is the same, so we're going to write that down, 1,000 kilograms. Oops. We also are going to assume that it's going to go at the same speed and it's going to also stop as a result of hitting this mountain of pillows, so the change in velocity is still 14. However, this time the time is going to be different. When you're crashing into a mountain of pillows, instead of an abrupt stop from hitting a cement wall, you're going to slow down over a much bigger period of time. Let's say for this mountain of pillows, let's say it takes two seconds to slow down in the mountain of pillows. Now we just plug in some different numbers. For the unknown, then we're still solving for force. Our equation is still the same. We want momentum equals, or excuse me, impulse equals momentum. We're going to substitute, so we want to find force. Our time this time is different, so 2 equals 1,000 kilograms times 14. When we solve this time, force turns out to be a much different number. We're going to get 7,000 newtons. In other words, the pillows had to push on the car with a lot less force in order to get it to stop because it was taking more time to do it. It took two whole seconds instead of the wall when it took 0.8 or 0 0.08. So the, the pillows had the advantage of slowing the car down over a much bigger period of time. If you were riding in this car, the push that you would feel on the car would be a lot more pleasant. And you might actually walk away from this one because it took more time to slow it down. It's like kind of like spreading out the amount of work. If you spread it out over a bigger amount of time, it doesn't feel as rough. So I've got two more things to show you on the bottom. These are just ways to help you to remember some basics about impulse. And here's what they are. I'm going to rewrite the equation and I'm going to make the letters different sizes to talk about the difference. So it says momentum change over a big period of time, kind of like hitting in the pillows. Your mass and your velocity changes are still going to be the same. We're assuming you're the same car hitting the same wall or going at the same speed, but you're, you're going to be doing it differently. So it says over a long period of time. Well, if you're going to do that, it's going to be a much bigger time. Well, if that's a much bigger time, it's going to require a much smaller force. So over a long time, is going to be much less force. Well, on the other side of the, on the, other side of the uh, equation, momentum change over a short time, same car, same change in mass. Although, if you're running into a brick wall, it's not going to take very much time to stop. Well, short time is going to mean a very large force is going to have to happen to get you to stop over a shorter time. This video is going to be posted on my website.